But there's nobody. There's nobody to justify this one. No. Was that enough justification? It's not enough. Are you convinced? No, not, not at all. all. Which one? So Which maybe one? before I open the floor, Minister, you need to justify this more. Beyond what they have written here. Beyond what is written here, so that we can get you why you are still keeping this PU. And, and why for a long time? No, he's well represented. Information. It's all the same, Muchiga. Exactly. We pass some things, then later you hear the news that somewhere else. Okay. Now, uh, as far as we are concerned, I think you need to speak more. You need to say more, a little more on the privatization unit thing. Mm. Otherwise, it will be in jeopardy. Privatization unit no. I really don't say, if you can be clear, mm. because we have said the privatization unit has not been wandered. It is still operating because there is still work to be done. But this work is being done by other agencies. Yes, well, for example, the litigation issues, we yeah. have that on a general. Yes. That on a general, but they are providing support. No. No, which yeah. support? No. I'm the chair. Mm. Yes. I'm chairman. Yes. I'm chairman, and we are going to see how much more work is uh, He has no work, that's why he's here. Yeah. Rest is closing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I read the word, but uh, that on a general, we even gave a supplementary for this purpose of the litigation. This committee. Minister of Finance gave a supplementary budget to Attorney General to carry out this litigation. And also, Chair, there are other entities who are also in that litigation. There, is, there are those from Uganda Railways, there are those from Minister of Works, they have never asked for a supplementary budget. They are working within their budget. So I don't know what is so special about Minister of, of Finance that because they are backstopping the, the Attorney General in the litigation, they should now come for some. When you got a lady to the key, you got a lady is not asking. Minister of Works is not asking. Attorney General is a lead agency, they asked yes, and we gave. So I do not see how the Minister of, Minister of Finance you should would use this as a basis to ask for supplementary budget. But also, Chair, what I thought. What I thought, I have seen the 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 the, 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 the response here. Chair, I would request that we have got people in this committee, or, or colleagues, who are well grounded with this year accounting things. Hmm. We don't need the time. They study this. Yeah, we have to. They study this thing and the advisors. After all, the minister has given us this. He doesn't need to get our response now. Exactly. We appreciate he has given Very us. Good. But allow our colleagues who are grounded in it. We have auditors here. They are auditors here. They will advise us on this, which he has submitted, Chair. Mm. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I want to submit on two issues. Mm. One, mm. Yuri, in the first meeting, the issue arose between the 10 billion we, we appropriated in the financial year 2020-2021 and this one existing under the supplementary sheet. And also we requested for particulars for the breakdown of the 10 billion. He has given it. And uh, Mr. Chairman, all this information has now been provided. What is remaining, maybe, is uh, site visits. Exactly. 
to appreciate what exactly is happening on site. And Mr. Chairman, in the view of this, I am in full support of the supplementary to your report for 10 billion. Second, it has been fully justified. That is my Mm. But that is my view. Yes. It is his opinion. Is I'll opinion. give you the floor. And seconded. Mm. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Number two. After all, you don't, Mr. Chairman. Number two. Procedure, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman. he came before you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I am still I'm, holding I'm the floor. I'm on procedure. Let yeah. him raise the procedure matter. Chair, the, the, the practice in, in, in our court <coughs> work is that. Uh, when we summon witnesses, we receive information from them. Once they have given us information, yeah. if we find that there is something lacking, we ask them to provide the lack. Mm. Once they have given us the information, we allow them to take leave. Yes. And then the committee mm. takes a decision internally. Yes. And that decision includes as to whether the committee is in, in agreement with the presentation of the, 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 the witnesses or, or, or whoever appeared before the committee, or no, that's an internal decision which we have to make. For now, we are only supposed to receive information or whatever information we need, and that's how you call them. So, proceed as a chair. Is it right? Are we proceeding well? To start pronouncing ourselves before even we internally discuss and then we as a committee, before the our visitors mm -hmm. proceed the right chair for us to go to that level now. Because each one of us now start pronouncing, I support, I don't support, I have nothing to do with my senior brother, but I will proceed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, um, I think we are still probing into this matter. Yes. So let's get more detailed first before we can run to the conclusion. Exactly. But you had raised an important point about the other 10 billion we appropriated. Yes. I hope you still need that information because you have already run the conclusion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the minister's letter uh, talks about this current 10 billion. The minister's letter. Can I go back? Annex 2. The very last one. The second last paragraph. Yeah, give him another copy. There are copies here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman, the we have got it. The minister's attachment, yes, the minister's attachment. Paragraph 2 states the addition of Uganda shillings 10 billion in the budget for financial year 2020 2021 will be used for staff recruitment, staff training, and other operational expenses at the number of the same. And this is one of the issues we had raised, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my point. Number two, I would like to pick it from where Honorable O.O. Oh, oh. uh, so, on uh, privatization unit. Mr. Chairman, when you look at the annex, uh, first of all, to begin with the start, the narration. The original narration, Mr. Chairman, was that all the 3.9 billion was to cater for staff salaries. But now in the annex, the staff salaries only account for 2.6 billion. And uh, from the arguments, I think from here, the assumption is that CU is uh, winding up. It is in uh, its uh, final stage. 
I'm just wondering why you have to keep this store structure in an entity that is in the process of winding up. Mr. Chairman, my concern number two is on outstanding invoices as at March 2020, 103 billion. We want to know how these invoices arose and what they relate to. Mr. Chairman, the same entity is spending on medical insurance an amount in excess of 81.9 billion million. Oh, yeah. And group personal accident. This is also insurance for it. Oh, yeah. that? Of 103 oh, no. million. <laughs> this is in the annex. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chairman, when you analyze rent, rent for rent space for quarter four is 108 and 8 million. Meaning Rent for the entire year is in excess of 433 million for an entity which is winding up. Then, the same entity is renting for documents 95 million, just the store, keep the documents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, the same entity has areas for internet. 89 million, among many others. Mr. Chairman, I'm just wondering whether these obligations relate to this entity or they are just planning simply because you ask me. Mr. Chairman, I want this explanation. Thank you, Thank you so much so. for that technical submission. <laughs> yeah. It's not a total, in short. Mm. These it's are not numbers. a total. These are numbers. Directors yeah. do what? These are numbers. Okay. Three okay. members, six. Those are the ones paid by okay. the two point six. Oh. So the salary is is yes. That's yes. what the document says. Less two point six. That should be one point three. Oh. Yes. You see here. You are the one who have given. You see there. You you give you give another analysis. How many people? How many senior officer one? Principal Council one, Greek member six. They are the ones asking for 2.6. So the minister should explain that. Link number two, those chair, two pages. Number two, Chair, on my submission, I remember when you last had the job, we had requested the minister when you come next time, you also tell us not only how you want to use the money, but also where you got the additional work. I think maybe I was not clear. The minister has not come clear on that. You also come clear on the way he has got the additional resources to warrant this supplementary expense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. That's why you did You took me there. You took me there. You took me The minister submitted that. Uh, there are still some outstanding work. Uh, is it possible to have an estimate of how what these works are and how long 
this work will take. This is in view of uh, the costs which are associated with maintaining this, uh, this office. Uh, you can see in terms of rent, in terms of other operational expenses. So it would be good for us to have a picture of when will this facility actually wind up so that we are able to also to know, apart from this, what our future commitments are. Mm. Uh, I want Can you use the mask, please? <laughs> with the nose, with the nose. <laughs> Where are those? Oh, they are at the bottom. Mero <laughs> Rana. <laughs> Yeah, that salary, gross. That salary, gross. It would make a reduction. That would be a salary, gross salary, from the higher side. And then how that comes out. Two. If it's a government department, if it's a government department, that it is performed in other base structures of government, we need to pay money this way. So we want a justification on how you arrive at this figure. You can see a secretary, a receptionist, having that amount of money. But you are just making up figures so that you add up and come up with this total. So that's why that we need to the money. The other issue that I find is that uh, <coughs> under the regulation, we commit government when we don't have money. So this area, because I think they are guys Commitment that, control. Eh? Commitment control. Six commitment control. The, the, the public interest management act is very clear on that. Yes. You can no longer come to meet government where you don't have. Yes. So how did the state of these people commit government when they do not have the money to accumulate all these bills? So that's also breach of the law. The other one is that we are remaining with one man and had a, I know it's 14 days, talking about 15. So, are you saying we have not been paid? That these people are not being paid? So, now when you go to this thing here, this research institute here, the last time the minister was here, he talked of the tax, some figures of 30 million that they required, and that in the budget, we only provided 10. I've studied the justification here, people. We don't see the submission of the minister there and the right up now. So the minister was here, made the submission, which is what was right to tell us whether this money meets the criteria of an example of or an equity. Because to the best of my knowledge, this money can be pushed properly to the next financial year. So what magic are you going to do under the legal environment to, to, to spend money in the year that 45 days, 10 billion? <laughs> this is another way of determining the public resources to be taken to agencies that lack capacity and later on they will be reflected and state balances which we will never trace. And that has been the goal of currency. So I think I have a strong opinion, contrary to what Mr. Nessas talked about, that this is bad money, not to prevent more value public finance, and that this money will most likely 
go to Mexico. And the agent says that normally the company will send your money in 45 days. Most of it is a project. So justify that you are not a project for, for real. Yes? Rob will spend with this money. And I would demand them to what you talked about here when I look at the analysis. Nothing is like agent. No, not agent. Don't say it's very agent. So I just give it this is bad money, the wrong investment, yeah. and this money here needs to be investigated in Not just beyond this, or how we count up with this kind of yeah. So, I have a strong opinion on 10 billion, that it is bad money, what it is spent in a bad way, and to be a waste for public resources. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. On this side. I'm coming to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You'll wind up. You'll wind up. Mr. Chairman. I want to fast for the for the benefit of the members of this committee to contribute the fact that I've been fortunate to visit this center in Amman and the Bissama Varaswa which has been there. I also want to note that in this country such infrastructure is, has been set up some places are not utilized on the account yeah. of failing to provide money. Yeah. Of failing to provide money. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yes, but we will be very careful with people that nature. Because they should not come here for if we spend on it. If you are fighting for it, it should be very well spent on it. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, Mr. Chairman, this was moving on procedure. The report here, which you have read, if you read the last paragraph, the third last paragraph of the report of you, it says clearly that the procurement processes for acquisition of required goods and services for this financial year have all been made. So they have prepared what they are waiting for the money to complete. So it is very clear that they are here. That they will use the money for the prepared procurement, they have made the orders, and like that. That's now a different matter from the procedure. Yeah, it's a different matter. Um, I think when you are presenting um, in this committee, uh, pretend as if you know you are just a member of budget committee without prior information. Yeah, so make your submission on technical grounds. Mr. Chairman, we are here to legislate for this country, not to tell lies for our personal interests. I therefore have to tell you something on which I'm knowledgeable. I will also tell you that the same sector budgeted for that money last year was not provided. When we budgeted again this year, that particular provision was not provided. And now we have been clearly informed here. There is no benefit in spending 30 billion and then we don't operationalize. That's what million dollars. Thirty million dollars. So one twenty billion. We have been informed here that the procurement process has already begun. Yes. So I've been in position to meet the deadline of the forty so many days left in the financial year. So I think this committee should consider seriously where are your masks? of this facility oh, operationalized yeah, fully for the benefit of this time. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank my colleagues who have contributed. Uh, but I have some uh, somewhere. Some First, mm -hmm. I want to thank Colonel Musasu and the privatization unit. I think he has done good work for me to don't want to add much. But maybe what I wanted to get to Mr. Chairman through you to ask the Minister of uh, Finance to tell us, apart from the Ministry, who are the officials from the privatization unit who are here to explain, like the Professor has done. Yeah. Okay. Well, because uh, these issues we want him to, 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 to explain, otherwise, we would be happy if we can withdraw, like the, the spine, fine spine has did. Because they think the way my colleagues have explained, you can, you can see a report somewhere. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think let, let, let's, agree, uh, let, 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 let's agree as a team, as a committee, that we should not uh, continue discussing uh, Yuri, the 10 billion, before we visit the facility. And I want to suggest that let's agree tomorrow at 10, we visit those who have time, we visit there, then after lunch, we, 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 we resolve. Yeah. Because me, me I, 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 I think my brother Mutel has been there, that's why he can convince us that we, we, we proceed and approve. But it is very, very, very unfortunate, especially what we are seeing. After we deliberate on something, people are taking us for granted. Actually, people want to know, who are those people on this committee of budget? Everybody is asking. Other colleagues of members are thinking we are the ones causing us problems. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you should know that. The professor is, 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 is my, I respect him very well. I know him, I, I, I trust him. But Professor Mary, we are we also human being, we are serving this country. <laughs> we don't want to pass something and then tomorrow another person is challenging us. Then Mr. Chairman, tomorrow is not very far, or Monday, let's first go there and visit this facility. And then we, 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 we resolve. There is nothing wrong with that. And Mr. Chairman, I, don't, I want to disagree with the Professor on the issue of uh, the machine. Which is, uh, which is already on standby to be procured from India. He, the whole factory has one machine. You mean if it is procured by, if it is taken by another company or another company, <laughs> we cannot get, we cannot get a machine. What type of a company with one machine? <laughs> so let's wait, we should not rush. Let's wait, go and visit, then we, 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 we resolve and, and hand over. Mm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, lastly, I want to um, I want to thank the the, the, the member, the Ministry of Finance, at least because we were, we were asking for explanatory notes, and at least some extent they are there. That's why our colleagues, the technical people, could come out with these questions. But otherwise, Mr. Chairman, let's not waste time, and I want to beg you, Mr. Chairman. Let's visit the area, these areas. Yeah, and the point is already made. Thank you mm. very much. Okay. Seeing is believing. Yeah. Uh, I cannot agree with you more. Kano. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I think we should have uh, trust among ourselves. First of all, our uh, old colleague knows. You are the one who will be able to pay 10 to 20 million, million first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, tomorrow you are the one who is going to betray us again. You will just tell us. We are here in you, with you in the committee. We are here with the committee. And you are the one who was the first one. Can we have order, please? No. We don't want to double deal us in this committee. Ah, you will not scare me. No, you will not scare me. You were here. And you were the first person to talk to me. No, you will not scare me. I think we need services of a sergeant here. Because he was the first person here to come out here. 
<laughs> and attack the community members. No, 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 we cannot accept this time we are excluded. We Osan the Tunaba. No, 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 you know what I want Keep your peace, please. Honor of Kajila. Keep your peace. Yeah, mm. The more we delay the operation, we are losing. Therefore, me, my proposal is that we must trust the different people, we must protect, we must trust our studies, we must trust our people who have been there, who don't know, who know what is happening, and we should move. We are wasting a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time as a chairman. So my proposal is that we must move and support this institution to do the best job for this country, the procedure issue I wanted to raise. Mm. The colleague earlier on kept Rosa the same thing. That when we are here, we are getting information from the technical people. After that, we sit as a committee and deliberate. We don't go ahead and decide now before even the work. That's the issue I want to I want to put some people and then this is one of the big decisions with the traitor. I'll never be a traitor. <laughs> when this matter of when the dead girl was raised here, here in this room, I oppose it. No. 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 I did no. 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 And we leave that one. No. That matter should not run. Okay. No. 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 We are lacking our the chair of, of science and technology. Science and, and technology. Science and technology is most. And we also have the minister here. Let them just tell us one thing. One thing. And that's why we are here. Which honorable Mwanga to raise? You tell us as to whether this request, just, just, we should be around that. Not the processes. I even don't know why you brought the, the professor. What we need is not about the process. All we need is does this request to meet the the parameter of unavoidability and unforeseeability. That's all we need from you, Honorable Minister. I don't know why you disturb my good professor here. For what? What is the professor come to do? All we ask you, just tell us. Because as a committee, our role is not to reject your request. But does it meet the requirement of the law? That is all. I'd like to give information. I'm taking it from the submission of the Honorable Committee. It's even saying that this matter appeared while they were considering the budget. Now, if a matter appeared while they were considering the budget and we did not find it, it cannot be brought under the submission. No, wait, wait, he's still holding the floor. Are you giving information? Yes. Can I give you information? Uh, thank you all, all for people as well. Mr. Chairman, I wouldn't be comfortable when we operate as if this, this is the first time the committee has started working, and as if we are seeing extraordinary things. Mr. Chairman, I have argued before, and I still argue, it's good even in the ministry to hear the rest of the case. How many times have we told the entities that this one you will get a supplementary? Very many times. So when a member argues here that the committee oversaw it, and they never budgeted for it. Why are they coming now? I want us to be realistic when we are making our actions. 
Okay, thank you very much. That's the problem you should have given us. You give us that information and we process it. You tell us that it is you, the finance committee, or the uh, most committee, that actually had a voice that this money would be... Then we, we, we have that information. <laughs> and then we proceed. <laughs> Chair, for me, on, on, on Yuri. On Yuri. I think we don't even need to waste time visiting that uh, institution. This who need the money, let the Minister of Finance and the rele re 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 relevant stakeholders in the, in the committees just assure us that to meet the parameters and we go to the House and we tell them that this request meets the parameters, the re legal requirements for supplementary. So we this our position. Chair, that's on Yuri. Only, only, only the other one. Yeah? Representation I want to thank Honorable, my senior colleague, Mr. Sisi. Mm, he's your See? junior. Yeah? He's your junior. Yeah, he's my senior, senior colleague. in the house. My oh, in the house, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for, for shedding light yeah. on this unit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, m what I find it, what I need more clarification is that uh, I want to know the legal status of this unit, these workers. Are they contractual workers? Uh, is, is this a department or ministry of finance? Or is it just uh, an independent unit like we have got DC, UNRA, uh, KCCA? Because, Chair, yeah, the salary of the directors can pay six MPs. <coughs> the salary of directors alone can pay six MPs. But do you know how many directors there are? No, no, there are only two. There are there only two. Two directors? Yeah, there are only two. Mm. And if, yeah. So, so uh, fine, that's okay. So, Chair, what I want to find out from the, the minister is that this is, a, this is the Ministry of Finance which plans our budget. And this entity is within them. I have seen their excuses, their argument that originally the money they were getting was just being consumed, but now they have been forced to take the consolidated fund. I thought by law, all money must go to the consolidated fund and then it is appropriated. Strong but for finance, I think they have been doing it in a different way. I just need a clarification, Honor Minister. You clarify for me the status, the legal status of this privatization unit and why the workers there are paid different rates from other government workers. Because, like, principal counters. We also have principal counters in the government, but I want to know why in the ones who are, even in the finance, there are others. I don't know why these are not different from yeah. the others. But finally, finally, Honorable Chair, I want Honorable Minister to tell me that you are the minister that plans that budget for this country. Why did you foresee that this unit was going to have, because even money going to the consolidate part, it is your action. It is you direct that money should go to the consolidate. Why did you budget for this money? I just want to see that. If you can clear that air for me, I have no problem. Sure. I think a related question, a related question to what you are putting now, you see, on that page, they are giving us the monthly salary. Gross. Gross. You yes. know, what is it that, they are, that the government is owing to these people? Is this this monthly salary? One month? Two months? Seven months? And uh, what has been happening? Have you been paying these people? Because it is not clear whether you have been paying them or you just want to begin paying them. The analysis doesn't come out. It doesn't make sense. You know? Because when you add these figures, you will be well beyond 3.9 billion. I think let's get this preliminary information. No, this one is related to what you just said. Chair, mm. on top of that, the minister should provide us with a structure. Because this is not the first time they are paying their salaries. Mm. What have they been paying? Mm. Let them give us the structure, the salary structure so that we know what exactly these people have been paying and yeah. when they stop paying. No, this, yeah. this is they, just the important the one. Mm -hmm. No, it's not clear when you stopped paying. You know, you're giving us a monthly bill. A monthly bill that is, I think, over 3 billion shillings. You know? 
uh, it's over three billion shillings. So what about what have you been paying? You know, and why are we in this kind of situation? If because wages must be foreseen, you cannot argue that you did not know that you are supposed to pay your worker, yes. a worker that has been with you for so many years. I think yeah. since 1991. Hey. You know, and now you are saying <laughs> that you need a supplementary to pay for your wages. Which hmm? month? So now, uh, Minister, as you as you submit on that one. Please also clear the air why this supplementary should not have been foreseeable and why it could not be avoided so that we deal with that legal uh, requirement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. As the court is again holding meetings at the club, I have informed this honorable chair. The court is a club, it's all the time. Uh, can, can you please call back that clerk? He's supposed to be here. What is he doing? He's supposed to be here. <laughs> As the ED told you, we received a grant of 30 million US dollars uh, to set up this uh, state of art facility at Namanve. 30, 30 million US dollars is an equivalent of roughly 110 uh, a billion Uganda shillings. Uh, and as you see the trend, even with the COVID coming in, many of these countries globally, people are really going to be thinking about producing what they consume and trying to export the excess of what they are produced. And one of the strategies that we have as a country is industrialization, focusing on import substitution and export promotion. And for us to do uh, agro-processing and industrialization, we need machines to make, to add value to these products. If you look at one of the things that have been actually increasing the cost of manufacturing is setting up, importing machines and raw materials from outside the country. So we think that this facility is very important because part of the element is machine making machines. Machines that make machines and spare parts. So instead of importing something uh, from UK, from Europe, at almost five, I'm just coming to... Allow him to... Please. Uh, I know Chibumba is thinking we do, we, do res we, we do respect each other. Eh? And you know other things we do together, but... <laughs> 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 so, so we cannot avoid operationalizing this facility. We have already invested 110 billion Uganda shillings. It needs to be operationalized. So, and for it to be operationalized, it needs money. And as Honor Musas has talked about it and others, during the budgeting process, there are some things that we are supposed to approve, but they are not approved, and we can't go into that discussion because all of us know what happens during the budgeting process. So this expenditure is unavoidable because if you don't spend this money to operationalize this facility, it means that the 100 billion is just lying there. And yet we are talking about, in a wake of COVID, to do import substitution. We want, for example, we are borrowing almost, we are borrowing almost uh, 500 billion, 500 million US dollars from the IMF, and part of it, one trillion, is going to UDB. UDB wants support manufacturing, small, medium, and big manufacturing. And for this to work, we need machines that are going to add value, beginning with our rural areas. So we think this is an unavoidable expenditure in the context of the requirement of the supplementary. Thank you, sir. The point, uh, Chris is here to speak about the pending work with the privatization unit and maybe shed light or no. Uh, friends, these people were already recruited and they were recruited on these terms. And as you know, it is unconstitutional 
uh, let me not go into unconstitutional, but it is not normally easy when we have recruited somebody at a certain salary scale, uh, scale to bring it down after some time when it's still at the same work unless something has happened. So that's why we could not change the salaries. Uh, but the, the, the most important thing which the, the committee wants to know, what is the pending work with the privatization unit? Why are you still existing? Chris, can you? Yeah, and also why did you foresee? And why did you foresee this fixed expenditure? But Minister, before you come here, speaking on the first one, under you, we need to comment on why this expenditure was not budgeted for in the normal budgeting process. Considering that it is so important the way you have explained it, you already highlighted the importance of the team. And how you even went and got the loan. No, it's when you are getting a loan, you know that they are coming to build it's a, a grant. A factory, a grant. A, yeah. They are coming to build a factory or build whatever rooms are they needed, the equipment, the machines there. Why you didn't allocate these people money? If you allocated, why you didn't and yes, fund yes. them? And now you are saying this is a question. And see, are you being serious? No, but you see, Mr. Chairman, we, we, need to, we need to we need to we need to clear this. What we are doing here, we are asking a supplementary, and the supplemental appropriation is also appropriation. Yes, just a, just a second, mm -hmm. because. As Honorable Musasi told you, there are things that we miss out in the main appropriation. For one reason or the other. Eh? For one reason or the other, Mr. Chairman, you have been a chair of this budget committee. Even you, even this committee itself has in one in one time or the other said no, you will consider that one later. Because of the, some other things that were there. Eh? Yes. I'm not blackmailing Parliament. But, but for this for this particular one, for this particular one, Mr. Chairman, for this particular one, I would hear all the all the no, just a second. Wait, wait. No, it's, I cannot blackmail you for it, you know that. Uh, for, for I can yes. Maybe you have clarified when you got the grant, mm. what was the design project period, construction? Right. When was construction supposed to end, whereby we are supposed to move to the next stage mm. of operationalization? Right. When we know the cutoff there, it could be a reason why you didn't provide. Yeah. Yeah. It could yeah. be, it could right. be negligence, okay. Okay. something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. Mike, thank, you. thank you very much for that guidance and information. Can you, can you take it from that side? Yeah. Thank you. 
Ah. We need to give him at which point project has ever been designed that way. Whether a grant or whatever. You tell us, Anna, you are a professor in project design. Can you design any project sense? And it comes to the point of professional life and the key component. Which speaks that you, 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 you are using mm. a project of two billion dollars, which is not which component are you using? It's that one. That was not part of the grant, and they gave you a grant. But China gives you a part of grant. Which one? I think you are correct in that. 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 I think you are correct in a period that was less than the two years, yes. that was originally anticipated. Yes. And on that basis, a need arose to get this money. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think we can go with that. That's why you are taking the all along. Chair, if I told the professor very well, this project started in 2015. 18. 2018. 18. He said because 18. So what was the 2015? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. 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 We shall go to see those who need to see. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we shall go to Mr. see this facility. I'm now those who don't want to go, don't worry. I'm comfortable. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm comfortable. Uh -huh. So, Professor Ten O'Clock, we shall be there. Any missing links, I think, will be clarified there. But uh, if I may make a statement, this is a plant that uh, Uganda has been waiting for for a long time. It is a, a game changer, like he put it, for our industrialization process. So we badly need it. And whatever we need to do to get this one running, we should do so. Yeah, so that we get it running yesterday. We, we badly need it. Uh, now, members, the professor can take leave. I think the professor can take leave if he needs Mr. to. Chairman. Professor. Mr. Chairman. You, you can take leave. Assistant. You can take leave and prepare for tomorrow's visit. Tomorrow, yeah. 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Professor. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, about your I hope you are not going back to Yuri. <laughs> that one, you are, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Because that's what I wanted. You <laughs> are <laughs> fears of my colleagues and that is okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman on privatization unit, I want to really ask a question to the minister or the, the, the officer from privatization unit. These, these were, were not recruit, they are new, these were not new recruitment. They are, it was not new recruitment. They knew these civil servants were there. And then you have the budget for the whole, for annual budget for the whole year. And it, these salaries are not in the budget. Monthly budget, by the way. budget, and they are not there. Now, in, a, in a such a situation, because a driver is not a, on the management, top management of this privatization unit, and now the, the mass has gone, uh, he has not received the, uh, his salary. In such a situation, what do we do? Do we penalize the driver or we penalize the, the, the management? There must be something really we need to, to investigate. Okay, so yeah. I, wanted, yeah. I wanted to, to yeah. also suggest yeah. maybe Kenneth you can shed yeah. some light on yeah. the fact that uh, yeah. this is salary and privatization unit is saying we collected the money and put it under the consolidated funds and we knew that this was a, a fixed cost. Can we shed light why it was missed out in the, in the main? 
Can we shed light on that one? Yeah. And then uh, Chris, Chris will answer the question of the pending work by the privatization unit. Can, can you answer the pending work and then uh, Kenneth will answer that? And when is it concluding? Briefly. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, just to shed light on what privatization unit is still doing. Okay, my name is Christopher Mujisha. I'm the director of Paraceto Montangin and also the accounting officer of privatization unit. Yes. So I, I just want to share with you the key activities that currently privatization unit is involved in. Uh, right now, uh, privatization unit is coordinating critical transactions in the energy sector. That is uh, the case of Umeme, because Umeme's concession is coming to the end. So as a country, we need to see how do we ensure continuity of distribution of electricity in the country. Uh, we are also uh, coordinating uh, key projects in the mining sector, transport sector, Uganda Railways Corporation. Uh, the previous uh, concession arrangement somehow did not work out. So now we have to look at it again and see how it can be structured. Uh, we are also uh, coordinating uh, uh, key transactions in Yes, Kilembe Mines, that is in the mining sector, and also in the electricity sectors. I also want to mention that we do undertake oversight uh, of public enterprises and also uh, initiate reform initiatives in the public enterprises that are not performing well. Uh, I, I just want to share with you that some of them which are actually doing very well, like National Water, we are part of the team that initiated those changes, those reforms in National Water that is doing well. You asked for an example, that's one of them. What are you doing there now? Uh, now we are looking at different... What are you doing there now? No, what we do, Honorable Member, we do follow-up, we do monitor their performance to ensure that set up, set up critical indicators, they continue to achieve them. But we also, we also focus on others that are not doing well. Yes. Uh, Did you privatize national water as well? No, it's one of those palestetos that remain under government. Okay. And uh, our oversight mandate cuts across even those public enterprises that will remain under government. Uh, then we are also supporting the Attorney General in answering ongoing critical litigation in the courts of law and international arbitration, which will save government from potential huge liabilities. These are ongoing transactions. PU is a custodian of the key records that are very instrumental in these cases. We also have the institutional knowledge about these matters, so we work very closely with the Attorney General's office. Uh, I don't know if I could also touch on other questions which were raised by members. Yeah, but uh, let me complete this one. Now, Uganda Railway. Yes. You know very well you gave us a very bad deal. And uh, now, I think we are under arbitration in London. Yes. We have lost a lot of money on this deal. Mm. And as uh, if that is not enough, you want the Uganda government to continue spending money on you. No, uh, After losing a lot of money because of a bad deal we had with, the, with the Uganda Airways. Oh, I remember. A bad deal with the Uganda Yes. You know? Can you justify why you are still in existence? No, honorable members, there have been gains, of course, and some challenges. There's no program that can go sometimes without some challenges. But there are also very good gains, honorable members. Uh, when we talk about Umeme, which you've said, we also know some of the good things that they have been able to do in terms of uh, uh, extending the network, although they still need to improve. And what we really do in the monitoring is to ensure that they improve on those areas where they have gone wrong. 
the case of uh, Kilembe Mines, which you talked about, no, or Umeme, Uganda Railways. You finish with Umeme. But chair, there is a minister in charge of uh, uh, energy. Yes. yes. We have era in charge yes. of the great uh, 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 Yes. Uh, Why should we still need your agency? Okay. Thank you, Chairman. What is so important they are doing that if we did without them, those organizations might collapse? Chair, uh, one from here. Okay, one more. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. This is a very good opportunity because in the Natural Resources Committee, we have been complaining about the PAD Act, the PAD Statute. This unit continued holding hostage the entities that are under the Ministry of Energy, which were privatized like uh, UMEME, UEGCL. So we have, the, we, have the, we have the right mechanisms under the Ministry to handle those agencies. And the Ministry is here has said that within six months the, the Act is coming for amendment or, or, or winding up. So, Honorable Chair, I want to tell the officer here that we have a lot of issues with you as a unit. You are stampeding the work of those agencies. You have not released them. You are not monitoring them. You are actually a very, very big obstacle. So I think you should just give us a timetable when you are winding up to leave them free so that they can perform their duty very properly. Chair, Chair, I want to proceed the issue. My procedure is, Chair, I... I, I really have a lot of interest in the discussion on the floor <laughs> as to the issues <laughs> of whatever <laughs> of, the, of the agency. But my point of, of uh, interest is that that conversation is not relevant to what is at hand. There is a sector committee that can consider that. For us, I expect this gentleman to justify the need for this money. And the questions are clear. He tells us the importance, it may be important, not important. The question is, why, why do you need this money? Justify why you need this money. That other question of your value, what you do, what you don't do, is for another day. Chair, I just want to supplement what uh, Honorable Gagarin is saying. Chair, yeah, that committee, that in unit, you know, I was a member of the Physical Infrastructure Committee. And we discovered that they had actually grounded the railway system in Scotland. What we recommended. So, so another meeting. Briefly, you are, you, you are listening to members. Yeah. So, what I was saying, that I was a member of the Physical Infrastructure Committee for, for, for several years. And we, we, we established that uh, that private it was actually holding that court and that uh, grounded the railway system. So we, did that, we, 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 we recommended that Minister Wax takes over the railway management. And that's why you see there is some semblance of right in the railway sector. Because it was taken over, from, they are no longer in charge. You should not be seen. He was taken over from ministry from because they had the ground and everything. They have no competence. They don't have any, any strategic direction. So the, the, the system was just grinding under them. So honorable chair, I just want to supplement what uh, honorable governor was submitting. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chairman. If you have additional information, I think you can now clarify it later. Okay, I hope I got it all. You said, what are we still doing if there are key institutions that are set up to do this work? Uh, I think members are saying that you have such a great liability. And honorable on, 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 on members, honorable members, the PAD Act does actually provide for our unit to work closely with the sector ministries. We don't do work, we don't overtake, we don't actually, like has been mentioned, take over institutions. We are actually supposed to work at arm's length, and that's what we do. And we work closely with the sector ministries. We do not work in isolation, but all these activities that we do, we do them in close consultation with the sector ministries. Okay, so I think what we need here 
What is probably could have been presented in the deal for why you are. Mm. Okay, uh, about justification. <laughs> One of the members, there was a question that was raised about why do we need this money. As you had, privatization is ordinarily funded from the divestiture proceeds, divestiture account. But all these funds from where now, which would have ordinarily funded privatization activities, was transferred to the consolidated account. Uh, the Ministry of Finance. No, it was on the directive of the Minister of Finance. Okay. Now, as a result, privatization unit now did not have funds to meet salaries, to meet some of the operational expenses, and actually to undertake part of the work. Now, you ask that for how long have workers not received money? That's indeed a big issue. Workers have not had salaries since February. Yes, since February. Because there are no funds for our members. We don't have any money. The transfer the money should have known the unit exists and therefore should have made a plan. You are drawing money from that basket. Yes. Then you transfer the consolidated fund without even putting in consideration. I think Kenneth should answer this one. I, I think that, <laughs> I just think that's why there is this supplementary. Uh, you relax for the time. Yes, relax. Uh, uh, let's get to Kenneth. Okay. I think, you, Mr. Chairman, first of all, uh, thank you and the members uh, for the issues which you have raised. Uh, and I think, particularly, Chairman, you raised a, a fundamental issue uh, regarding the winding up of the privatization. Of course, as members, you all know, uh, the privatization process was established under the PAD statutes. Now, in order to wind up this whole process, government will have to come up with a winding up bill. And uh, I think that is uh, a fair question, of course, uh, to ask the government, given where we have gone uh, in the privatization process. Because as government now, of course, we need to review the whole process, you know, from when we started. You, as you know, of course, uh, the parastatals we are categorized, we are put in different categories. Look at uh, the requirements, you know, where we are now, and what additional work needs to be done. Now, it is true that uh, the PU, the privatization unit, uh, used to be funded using the proceeds, you know, from the divestiture of public enterprises. But of course, also, as we know, uh, the divestiture process also has many other liabilities uh, beyond, you know, paying the salaries and wages, you know, of the technocrats. So part of that money has actually been going towards meeting some of those other liabilities. Now, uh, to the extent that now we are in a situation where we do not have resources uh, from the divestiture account uh, to meet the requirements of the unit, but unfortunately also uh, out of, uh, you know, I would say actually omission on our side, uh, the unit wasn't budgeted for. So the budget which was appropriated by Parliament does not include, you know, the salaries, as he has said, for February up to the end of the financial year. So our request to the members is that uh, we request that you allow us at least to get a supplement, supplementary funding to be able to meet the salaries of the unit. Because this is a contractual obligation. Already these people have a contract with government as per the law, and they definitely must be paid their wages. So our request is that let's go ahead. I mean, we request that Parliament approves the supplementary. We pay the wages of the unit for the months uh, where they have not been paid. And then the rest of the issues, the legal and policy issues regarding the privatization unit, then the Minister of Finance will come with a complete paper, a comprehensive paper to address those issues. But in the, as of now, Chairman, I think the most urgent issue is actually meeting, you know, the salaries of uh, these workers who definitely have a contract with the government. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, there's a supplementary question here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I raised the number of concerns on uh, privatization unit. But Mr. Chairman, maybe what I forgot to raise, but which Kenneth has clarified, is that some of these obligations are arising from the past events. And from the past events. In other words, they relate to the past commitments from Feb, for example, salaries, from Feb to date, and up to and maybe going forward to the end of financial year. People are not receiving salaries. Mr. Chairman, and they are Ugandans. Mr. Chairman, we are all salary earners. We know what it means when the salary has not dropped into the account. Mr. Chairman, I want to suggest that we look, we analyze this supplementary provision for privatization unit case by case, and we pick out items which relate to, for instance, salaries and probably outstanding obligations which may also uh, uh, which may also lead to unnecessary penalties to government. The bill say. And, uh, the bill, the bill. The bill. What, what do you mean by the bill? The, 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 the submission, the, what they laid their hand on, 3.9 billion to cater for salary obligations under privatization unit. So, Mr. Chairman. There are no other expenses catered for the bill. So if we bring those others, yes. then we shall be, so, as okay. they say. So, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Honorable Isiagi has enhanced my argument that we need to rethink and reconsider items in the request that relate to salaries and we sort them out. I beg to submit to you, Mr. Chairman. Now, uh, I think uh, the Ministry will need to give us evidence that they forgot to include the salaries for February up to June. Uh, you know, you need to present evidence of what you provided, <laughs> what was required, and what, was, what is was missing. We can provide evidence of the people who are on the payroll of the privatization unit, yes. their salary levels, mm -hmm. and how much money was actually budgeted for as a wage subvention for EU and the Minister of Finance. So yeah. We can actually put that in writing. Give us all that analysis. Give us that analysis. And then the second thing, the second thing you need to provide is that is the bill for winding up. Because we cannot continue paying for rent, we're paying for work plans, you know, they are what they call work plan expenses, uh, whatever these ones mean. Then arrears. <laughs> we are not going to pay this, but uh, I think we need to wind up. As a parliament, we cannot continue appropriating money to this entity. What we need to know to get the figures for winding up this thing. I think that's the figure we need. We may not appropriate it, but we can bring it to the attention of the House. That this is what they need to wind up, and our recommendation is that they must wind up. Do we agree? Yes. Yeah. I, I think you have got it. Okay. Allow the chair to, to talk. Uh, there is also the Ministry of Gender. Yes, they need to point. Can you? I need your attention, please. I'm giving you information. My, my, my role is to give you the animal to slaughter. <laughs> uh, let me give you the information. No, I'm giving you. You relax. <laughs> relax. Now, on, uh, on our Matia Kasaidia, 
laid on table what he called the addendum two. On our Musasi, I think, but do it so quietly. Mm. He laid what we call he called addendum two to supplementary schedule two. You remember we already had addendum two in the form of COVID. You remember very well. Now he is naming this one also as addendum two. So there I'm, I'm getting lost. Now he laid this one on the table on uh, 31st March. 31st March 2020. And uh, he was saying that the ministry, his ministry, had received additional supplementary expense requests amounting to Uganda shillings 22.4 billion for street children activities under the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Now the minister is here, Honorable Nachiwara Chiyingi, uh, to give us details about this expenditure. Um, I don't know how many minutes you need. You are raising what? An objection or what? That is a procedure issue. Honorable Bart, when he was explaining, he said that there are things you put together. I am very careful with my public reputation. But we have no Are you making a personal statement? The best of my knowledge, there is nothing absolutely I do in my heart. So I want him to elaborate with the minister. Go with the minister. We don't trade together. We don't sleep in the same village. There is nothing. Or except meeting him in this committee. I want him to elucidate. What is it that we do together with him? We can give you a role. Yeah, we don't sleep in the same village. I agree with you. No, we don't sleep in the same village. Mr. Chairman. Same woman? No. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we do a lot of things together with someone who is doing this. Ah, finish. In terms of debating each other. That's enough. That's enough. We do many things. Okay, Honorable Nachi Chiyingi. It is also true that we were not among the, the recently queried sections of the supplementary. So we are here to uh, supplement just in case members have an extra issue to raise. But the original uh, query was regarding you give us the issues that we are highlighting. No, we, but I appreciate no, we Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this uh, supplementary was laid on the table. It is with you, the committee. We have said that already. Yeah, we have said that. And you have, now, elaborate. now you have asked the minister to yes. shed some light and it's a straightforward. But yes, the information we want. No, but if you can listen, because there is no need to hear let the, let, the, let the Honorable Lady speak in fact, up and then we see. In chairman, fact, right Honorable Chairperson, yeah. I'm basically here to partly thank the committee of the House because uh, right from the beginning of the initiatives of street children, they have been quite supportive both in terms of the committee and in their individual capacities. So this was uh, an addendum to the original supplementary schedule that was highlighted. And it was our humble appeal that the committee enables us to complete the work that we began on, which was quite successful in many areas. And I would be here most of like to answer any query that, that would arise out of the submission that we made through the Ministry of Finance. I thank you. The, the, the photocopying, right, Honorable Chair.
we do have to know in the, Mr. Chairman. Right on our chair. Mr. Chairman, we actually don't know anything. Thank you. The minister is thanking us. We don't right know on our chair. Mr. Chairman. The, as we wait for the photocopy that is right happening, the submission through Ministry of Finance was regarding the balance of 2.4 billion, which, 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 the 2.4 billion shillings, which was meant to complete the process of evacuating, rehabilitation, and resettlement of children. You are aware, right, honourable members, that that all the children that we re, uh, evacuated from the streets were housed in 144 centers across the city and the, across the country. And the process was that you hold them for only a number of days as you resettle them in their communities. As we talk now, we have a hassle of returning those children either back to their communities or feeding them and, uh, and housing them all the way up to the end of uh, the period when we get the money to sustainably resettle them. So we are relying on the, the, the wisdom of this committee to enable us to get 2.4 billion for the following activities. The first part of the, of the schedule of money is meant to help the, the ministry to resettle. The second, to resettle the children in the gazetted centers in two folds. One, we evacuate children from temporary centers. I beg your guidance, right honorable chair. The first settlement, right honorable chair, is to take children from temporary centers to permanent centers. Can, can you protect me, right honorable? Sorry. No, no, no. Right, honorable chairperson. Right, honorable chairperson. The issue the minister is explaining has a lot of corners. Yeah. It's not something which is straight. Yeah. Which is straight? 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 Yeah. 